Rune Factory 4 is one of my favorite farming sims of all time and the farming sim gods must be smiling down upon me because after 10 long years, Rune Factory 5 has finally graced our switches with its presence. A lot has changed in the last 10 years since Rune Factory 4 released on the 3DS. So expectations were pretty high for this new and improved Rune Factory on the new and improved Nintendo system. But does Rune Factory 5 meet those expectations? Well, that's what we're here to discuss today. So don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons for more gaming related content. And without further ado, let's find out if Rune Factory 5 was worth the wait. In classic Rune Factory style, your character wakes up in some random place with an apparently not so random case of amnesia. Honestly, I'm pretty glad I don't live in the Rune Factory universe because amnesia seems to be so common. But after an epic display of heroism, you're welcomed into a quaint town called Redbark and given a job with Seed, who are basically rangers. The story of Rune Factory 5 and how you will inevitably save Redbark from impending doom is different from its predecessors, but the core gameplay elements are still the same ones that we know and love. In between progressing the story, you will busy yourself by farming, crafting, getting into battles, and flirting with the locals. How you doing? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> it is true that Rune Factory 5 hasn't drastically changed up its formula, and you will see a lot of the same. There's some of the same music, some of the same monsters, and even some of the same characters but in a different skin to make the experience a little more fresh. They've definitely take a don't fix it if it's not broke stance here, but I'm honestly not mad at it. I loved Rune Factory 4 and I'm happy that the new installment is the same Rune Factory that I know and love. The most obvious improvement here though is the 3D world that Rune Factory 5 is set in. I've heard negative reviews about it being a bit flat and lifeless and obviously it's no Breath of the Wild, but the world is bright and vibrant and is definitely a huge upgrade from what we saw in number four. I really like it. Me too. It's pretty. Stop being so mean. <laughs> the 3D third person perspective brings more life to Rigbath, especially when it comes to exploring the town and getting to know its residents. Rigbath is filled with quirky and interesting characters and interacting with them from this more personal viewpoint is honestly really charming and it actually inspires you to participate in some of the relationship building mechanics. Like many farming sims, Rune Factory has a vibrant cast of unique characters for you to meet and get to know. When you meet them for the first time, each character gets an adorable cutscene animation that captures their personality perfectly. As you get to know each person better, you are able to unlock secret cutscenes and events that really make it feel like you are building a relationship with these people in a really meaningful way. Our favourite change to these relationship mechanics, however, definitely has to be the most welcome addition of same-sex marriages. If you're making a sim and you're not including these kind of relationships, then what are you doing? It's 2022, man. Relationship mechanics are very common in sim games, but Rune Factory really shakes up this formula by allowing you to take your friends with you on adventures, making for some very powerful allies in battle. Your friends can gain levels during combat just like you do, so if you do go on adventures with them enough, they have the opportunity to get to a really high level. You can also give them stronger weapons to use, making them a huge asset in dungeons or harder boss battles. This is a really unique mechanic to take advantage of, and it's one of the reasons why I love this game so much. The coolest part about this mechanic, though, is it's not just the townsfolk you're able to invite out on missions with you, you're also able to tame and befriend monsters, just like Laura. <laughs> Monster taming is the most unique and underrated and cool part of the Rune Factory series. You are able to invite monsters to live in your barn and teach them to farm for you, use them as mounts to travel faster, or level them up to god tier status and have them throw down in a fight with you. These monsters can become absolute weapons on the battlefield. In Rune Factory 4 I befriended this ice wolf super early on and he was with me for the whole game. By the end of it, he was so strong, and as a result, I was stronger in battle. And it's not just regular monsters that you can tame either. If you're lucky and dedicated enough, you can also tame any of the boss monsters to become your new companions. 
This is honestly my favorite part of Rune Factory and I definitely recommend taking advantage of this mechanic as much as you can throughout your playthrough. And you're definitely going to need an extra set of hands or paws or claws on the farm this time around because now you've got two of them. Along with the farm at Seed Headquarters, you also unlock another one on your travels. But this one is infinitely cooler because it is also a freaking dragon. That's right, your second farm is literally a dragon. Mic drop, down, see you later. Rune Factory does love to take classic aspects from some games and tweak them to make them more distinctive and a farm on the back of a dragon does fit that criteria. Apart from existing on the back of a mythical beast, however, the farming mechanics are more or less the same. The farming is enjoyable as always, but the camera switches from top down to third person when you're in the vicinity of your garden, and it is a little bit janky and confusing sometimes, especially when you accidentally walk out and back in again quickly. The top down perspective does help you see your crops better, but the transition back to third person isn't very smooth. The camera being in third person for the whole time might make it a little bit harder to farm, but I honestly think it would have been better. For the most part though, this switch to the third person perspective really has helped elevate the Rune Factory experience. We are huge fans of this new 3D world and find that it makes things like combat more exciting and fresh. Boss monsters look much more badass and the new target lock-on ability makes combat smoother so you're not wildly swinging your camera about looking for the next enemy. There are also tons of new weapons and armor to find, craft and upgrade to give you that extra edge in battle and help keep the combat interesting, especially later on when the enemies get tougher and you have to start taking advantage of elemental weaknesses and stuff like that. But the question still remains, with such a huge upgrade in console, do the upgrades in Rune Factory 5 match up to that? Well... This game does suffer in terms of performance. There is a bunch of pop in when assets suddenly appear in front of you as they load in. And for some reason, every time you exit a building, the frame rate drops to like 10 FPS. But I don't play a farming sim to experience the world's most amazing performance. Sure, it would be better if it was flawless, but the issues that this game has don't stop it from being enjoyable and fun. I can deal with frame rate drops for a couple seconds as you step outside in order to play one of my favourite farming sims again. None of these issues are game breaking and I can usually look past things like that if the core gameplay is fun and honestly Rune Factory 5 definitely delivers. I just hope I don't have to wait 10 more years for the next one. But what are your thoughts? Are you able to look past some frame rate drops and pop-ins in order to enjoy a game? Or is that a deal breaker for you? Hit like to vote yes. Hit subscribe to vote no. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you're planning on picking Rune Factory 5 up and we'll catch all of you lovely people next week.